All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brandon Dunford, and I serve as the coordinator of new student and family programs here at Georgia Southern University. Uh, I have the privilege tonight of hosting uh, you all for this monthly family Zoom. Uh, so this month, of course, we're going to be talking about our fall commencement ceremonies. Uh, since those are quickly approaching. Uh, but before we jump into that, I do want to spend just a moment talking about our office, the Office of New Student Family Programs uh, here at the university and how you can get involved or um, access more of our resources and things that we do through our office for you as family members and supporters. So you are gonna be able to access pretty much everything that our office does through the parent and families link at the top of every Georgia Southern University official page. Uh, so if you find that parent and families link at the top in gold, you'll just click on that and that will take you to this home page. Uh, there are a lot of resources on this page. If you would scroll down just a tad, you would be able to see a bunch of those. Um, some key things that I do want to point out. Uh, the first is our family programs listserv. So if you are not regularly getting emails from us in new student and family programs, uh, then we do not have your information, uh, or you've opted out at some point to our emails. Uh, so that's a pretty quick fix. If you just go to this link and give us your information, we will gladly add you on to those emails. We send out generally about one to two a month, uh, give or take. Uh, so we're not going to be sending you too many, but going to try and give you all the information that you need to make you feel involved uh, in your students' education. Another key link is our family events tab. So if you click on that, you'll be able to see all of the great upcoming events that we have. Uh, that's probably how you actually registered for this webinar. Uh, so you've probably at least seen uh, a portion of our uh, page through that. Uh, but this is where in the spring, once we release information and registration for our Spring Family Weekend, you'll be able to access the registration there. You'll be able to see all of our Spring Family Zooms uh, once those are added in. Uh, so definitely make sure you're visiting this page every now and then to make sure you're staying up to date with things that are going on in our office. Uh, but without further ado, we're now going to pass it off to Dr. Amy Bala, who is going to present a bit on the upcoming commencement ceremonies. All right, thank you, Brandon. All right, before we do anything else, I'm gonna to attempt to share my screen because I did put together a quick um, uh, PowerPoint presentation for you just to hit some key points and give you some good tips about getting ready for commencement and, and some of the things you need to make sure that maybe the graduates have done uh, before it, it gets to uh, Thanksgiving break. So let me see if I can share my screen. I got dual monitors going on. So sometimes it does something funky. And I'm going to go into present mode. Brandon, do you see that in present mode? Yes, you are good to go. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. All right. So, um, you know, we're a little over a month away from commencement, which is really hard for me to believe. Um, I, I am an associate vice president of enrollment management and uh, commencement is my responsibility. So I oversee all the commencement ceremonies for the university and um, it, it's always such a great time. It's one of my favorite times of the year. It happens twice a year, of course. Uh, and, and it's just, it's a joy. It's a joy to see all the families because they are so happy. And the students are also so happy. Um, you know, we get to celebrate their accomplishments and we get to celebrate you as parents for supporting them uh, throughout their academic endeavors. So thank you to that. And um, yeah, it's just, we, we always look forward to this and it's such a feel good moment for the faculty and staff as well. Um, so th this is one of our pride and joys of the university's calendar uh, throughout the year. So we're excited as we get ready for commencement. Well, again, a little over a month away, we've got some stuff to get ready to do. If you haven't already seen the announcements, um, I just wanted to include this here to make sure that you realize when we are offering the commencement ceremonies. We do have three ceremonies this year. One is in Savannah and two are in Statesboro at Paulson Stadium. Both of those are at two o'clock. We try to put them at two o'clock in the fall, in December. So it's the warmest part of the day for you uh, because that is of course outdoors. Um, but Saturday on December 11th, we have commencement in the Savannah Convention Center. Any college can participate in that, so students from any college, as well as uh, Monday, it's students from the 
uh, colleges of business, education, health professions, and public health can elect to participate in that particular commencement in Statesboro if they wish. That's both undergraduates and graduates. And then on Tuesday, the next day, it's the uh, graduates from arts and humanities, behavioral and social sciences, engineering and computing, and science and mathematics. Uh, so again, we'll, we'll hit everybody and it'll be a fun time to, to celebrate together. So we look forward to seeing you in the fall. So in case you are wondering what kinds of things uh, your graduates need to be doing right now uh, in order to prepare for graduation, I wanted to include this information for you. Um, the checklist that we provide for graduates is for them to make sure to apply for graduation by October the 29th. Now, I realize that day has passed, so if you are wondering whether or not your particular student did that, um, that's actually not a hard design. So if, if, they're, if you find when you're quizzing your particular graduate, if, if they um, accidentally did not do that, uh, we, can, we can hopefully rectify that within the next couple of weeks to make sure that they, they, we were able to, to get them in. Um, the next thing that they need to do is, is RSVP to commencement by November the 14th. So that's next week. Um, everyone who has applied for graduation will receive information in their email about this. So if your student has received information about RSVP, don't worry, that first one has already been done. Um, so you don't have to double check, but if they can't find any information about it, um, you need to go back and ask them. Uh, the kind of information we're asking for by November the 14th as part of that RSVP is whether or not they're attending, because we have some that choose not to attend. Again, graduate's choice, uh, but we just love to know how many are planning on being there so we can plan appropriately, as well as which ceremony of the three that they want to attend. Um, if, and honestly, they get a choice of two because they can either attend one in Savannah or they can attend the one in Statesboro. And when they attend one in Statesboro, it aligns with the college. So we already know which one that they would go to, whether it's Monday or Tuesday. Um, we also ask how many guest tickets they want. They're able to select up to 20 for this fall. Um, and so, and I know a lot of students are actually selecting the max amount, which is 20, which is perfectly fine um, at, between me and you. Uh, we actually don't really anticipate having to uh, actually use tickets for Pulsa Stadium in the fall, but we need to wait till those numbers come in to see what they look like. So um, that actually may not happen with Pulsa Stadium, but again, we need the RSVP numbers. We need to know how many people they, they want to provide tickets to if we actually issue tickets. So there's that. Uh, they also have the opportunity to do a uh, submit a phonetic spelling of their name so that we can make sure to pronunciate it correctly, which is extremely important, of course. And this fun feature, they can also choose to record their name um, so that we can hear the pronunciation. We actually record their names in advance and we play it over the sound system as they cross the stage. We've got some cool technology that allows us to do that. Um, but by recording their name, especially if it's a tricky pronunciation, that's especially helpful for us in making sure that we get their name exactly right as they're crossing the stage in their important moment. Uh, again, double check with your graduates to make sure that they, they uh, found that email uh, in their Georgia Southern account, because that's what it'll come to, and it'll come from the office of the registrar. Um, if you have, uh, if you're having trouble locating that through your graduate, feel free to, to reach out to the registrar's office or to me, and um, we can track that down and make sure that they've got everything situated so that we can get their information. Uh, we need to be sure that your graduate has ordered their cap and gown by November the 15th through Herf Jones. Um, that information in order to do that and the links provided for that are on the commencement website. I'll show you that address in just a moment. Um, so that needs to be done before Thanksgiving as well. And then later on, basically the week prior to the ceremony, we'll distribute any electronic tickets to guests if we actually are going to ticket the events. Again, like I mentioned, we would likely will do that for Savannah because it's an indoor event, but depending on, on the size of the crowd, we may elect to not distribute tickets and just say, bring as many people as you want um, uh, because Paulson Stadium can hold a lot of folks and we've split the, uh, the, the crowds up appropriately. So we've, we're prepared to do that. So the commencement website, if you haven't already visited this website and you have someone graduating this fall, 
Um, information can be found at, at uh, this address, www.georgiasouthern.edu slash commencement. Um, right now, it's basic information about commencement and some FAQs that are up there. We add additional uh, details to that website about a month out. We're, we're polishing those last uh, pieces of those details now, uh, so you can expect that they will be up before Thanksgiving break. So please be sure to check back to that commencement website uh, for all the, the details, and hopefully we'll be able to answer all of your questions. So a couple of things I want to bring your attention to about commencement um, that will help your day go much better if uh, you plan appropriately. Parking tends to be one of the bigger ones, um, and we always encourage our guests to arrive one hour before the start time of the ceremony. You don't want to be rushed. You don't want to be caught in traffic, and sometimes that happens. We always intentionally plan our ceremonies during the time of day and the actual day to where traffic will be less of an issue, um, but we know that that's always a possibility and it's happened to us before. Um, so if you at least plan to get there an hour in advance and you run into traffic, then it's actually not quite as stressful for you or your, or your, your guests that are coming with you. So please plan on doing that. Give yourself plenty of time. Um, in Statesboro, I will be honest, it's going to be less of an issue because fall commencements are typically smaller than what we have in the spring. Um, so Statesboro should really not have a lot of challenges with parking. However, if you're going to the commencement in Savannah, parking is going to be a challenge this year because the convention center is currently under construction. And the main parking lot in the front of the convention center that we normally use, uh, the majority of it is gone and unavailable. So we actually have, um, we, there's a parking lot that's about a mile away from the building that the convention center uh, lets us use. And we bring our Georgia Southern buses so that our guests are all directed towards that parking lot. And then they can board the bus and we can take you that one mile to the front door to drop off. So again, you will leave yourself plenty of time to have to, to park your car, um, to, to get on the bus and go to the front, um, uh, the front of the convention center and, and, and get settled, get maybe a bottle of water or whatever you might need uh, before convention starts. So again, please plan to arrive early. Um, again, um, because this is a, a, the federal mandate says that buses, uh, we have to wear masks. So please remember to bring your mask if you are attending in Savannah because masks are required on buses. Um, so that, that is a requirement. So just don't forget that piece. Um, the other part about buses is they are ADA compliant. So if you have um, anyone coming with you who has mobility concerns, uh, we actually, because of the way that we have to route the buses and drop everybody off at the front door, um, we don't have drop off um, services for all of our folks coming in for any folks that are in wheelchairs or have mobility concerns. Um, however, because our buses are ADA compliant, we have no problems and we've done so in the past, they can actually um, easily board the buses and we can um, take them to the front door for you. So please plan on doing that. If you have anyone in that situation in your vehicle with you, um, go straight to the, the remote parking lot, load up on the bus, and again, we'll, we'll drop you off at the front door and it will hopefully work out just exactly how you need it to. But if you do have folks in that situation, again, I do encourage you to arrive early just because it'll take a little bit longer time um, in order to get situated and get to get on the bus and off of the bus. Some other thoughts about parking in Savannah, um, because of the number of guests we're expecting we and the, the number of spaces that are in that remote parking lot, we're basically estimating that we can accommodate two guest cars per graduate. So if you plan on bringing 20 people with you um, as part of your family uh, to the convention center, uh, commencement ceremony, please don't bring 20 cars. <laughs> uh, we, we need you to carpool wherever possible. And if you're going to, um, if you're going to exceed basically that two guest car per graduate, um, the other option that I would strongly encourage, and in fact, this would be my particular preference anyway, would be to park in downtown Savannah, uh, perhaps on River Street or Bay Street. Um, there's actually a parking garage that's right there on Bay Street that you can use. 
uh, and then the ride the free ferry across the Savannah River um, to the convention center. So that way you don't even have to mess with the parking um, on the convention center lot proper and you can just ride the ferry back and forth. And we have a lot of people taking advantage of that. Um, and we hope more people will do that this fall. All of that information is up on our commencement website, including a link to the schedule for the ferry ride. Um, so please check that out if, again, you're, you're doing the Savannah commencement with us this fall. Um, other things about guests with mobility concerns, um, I do need you to be aware that ADA seating is limited in both locations. So plan, again, to come as early as possible in order to get a good spot for you. Um, drop off parking and drop off and parking in Savannah, I've actually already talked about, but in Statesboro, I did wanna mention that handicap parking section is available in the parking lot in the stadium. Um, a map of where that's located will be posted on the website. But the other part that we found that, that guests don't necessarily anticipate is Paulson Stadium and the hill essentially that you have to walk up in order to get to the stand. It's, it's pretty steep. And so folks that, um, that do have mobility challenges, uh, we have folks that come in a walker and are walking with a cane. And, and honestly, that always concerns me when I see people trying to, to navigate that hill, because not only is it steep, it's not a short walk either. So if you have um, any guests that are coming with you that have these types of mobility um, concerns, uh, you may want to consider renting a wheelchair to bring with you to the stadium just to make that so much easier and so that there's no stress involved with worrying about folks um, not being able to make it up the hill or um, a, you know, some, some type of um, unfortunate situation happening with them. So I strongly encourage you to, to think about that. Um, other things, <laughs> Statesboro weather. Um, this one's particularly Statesboro. I do want to point out there is no rain plan. We do this rain or shine, and we have done it rain or shine in the past. This particular picture on the slide is our ceremony last fall when we were doing it in the pouring rain, and I will tell you it was cold. Um, so I, I, I need you to Prepare for that and prepare your graduates for that. Um, be sure to watch the forecast. And if there is rain, make sure everyone in your party and your graduate has a poncho that they can put over uh, whatever you're wearing um, just to help keep you as dry as possible. Again, we're talking about December. December widely varies in Statesboro. So sometimes we've had beautiful 65 degree weather. And then last fall, it was like in the 40s and raining. So it was probably um, one of the coldest experiences I've ever had. Uh, but everybody actually was in quite a good mood because it's graduation. Um, so, it, you know, people are happy to be there. But we also don't want you to be miserable and, and cold, uh, nor do we want your, your students to be in that situation. Um, so again, please plan on bringing a poncho. Um, umbrellas may or may not be allowed depending upon the number of people that we anticipate um, being at the ceremony. Um, again, Tulsa Stadium can accommodate a large crowd. Uh, but we'll, we'll assess that closer to time based on the responses that we're getting in the RSVP to make sure it's a, a crowd size that we're expecting that's small enough to allow umbrellas. We'll post all of that information on the website, whether or not umbrellas are allowed uh, closer to time. So just know that there's that as well. The other thing I'm going to point out, and you may laugh when I say this, but please, please, please dress for the weather. And that's not necessarily um, something that I'm pointing out for you. But um, for, for the graduates in particular, I, sometimes I wonder if they check the weather before they leave that day. I, I actually use this particular picture on this slide because if you see the, the, um, the, the, the girl behind the blue emoji who is in strappy sandals and um, obviously a skirt or dress or shorts or whatever, um, she's freezing. She's so cold. Uh, I, I can't even tell you how many blue toes I saw from the strappy sandals and stilettos that were actually on the field on state, in Statesboro last fall. So um, encourage your graduates to dress appropriately. Um, if it's gonna be cold, be warm. Wear warm things, wear layers, bring a blanket. <laughs> we saw plenty of people with blankets and that's 
perfectly acceptable. Um, so again, just some, some tips there. We want everybody to be as comfortable as possible. Other tips I wanted to mention um, for you, don't stress about taking photos because we do have a professional photographer at the stage to take photos of your graduate. They actually take it twice in two separate locations to make sure that we get good pictures for you. Um, and, that, and your graduate will be emailed those proofs after uh, graduation takes place. Remind your graduates to charge their phone. I laughed when I put this one in here, but um, if you're like me, I, I have a daughter, she's 13. Her phone is usually hovering at about 5%. And um, we have some brand new technology that we've used um, this past spring that we need some, them to present their phone to us right about when they're, um, before they cross the stage because we can scan a QR code and it will announce their name for us and put stuff up on the screen about who they are and, and essentially what honors they might, they might have. Um, so when that phone goes dead, and again, this, this happened quite a bit in our spring ceremony, um, we, we have to do some other things in order to make sure that their name pops up appropriately. We do have a backup plan. We have that all figured out, but it, it still helps to remind them to make sure that their phone is fully charged before they get to the stadium uh, on their graduation day. I wanted to mention to you, because this is something that we hear a lot, um, that names are not called in alphabetical order when they cross the stage. So, um, and, and we do this in order to make the ceremony as short as possible. It's a logistical thing. So what I would say to you is just to make sure that you spot where your graduate is beforehand and you can basically watch them as they start to approach the stage. We also have Wi-Fi, so um, they, they can essentially text you or you know, send you a message about, hey, I'm, I'm heading up there now. Um, but just make sure to do that. We also have big monitors so that you can see kind of where the folks are um, as, they, as they're crossing the stage. But I did want to point that out once. Um, we will have concessions and gifts for your graduate available on site at both Savannah and in Statesboro. So just a couple of things to keep in mind as you're getting ready for graduate. And that's all the, the things that I wanted to point out in advance. I know you may have questions at this point. So Brandon, I'm going to turn it over to you to, to feed me any questions that may come in and I'll do my best to, to give you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that presentation. Again, if you have any questions, you can submit those through either the Q&A feature or the chat feature. And you can find both at the bottom of your screen. Uh, so please feel free to go ahead and type your questions into either spot. Uh, so again, either the chat or q and I'll be monitoring both uh, as you work to submit those. Um, but I think one a uh, question that might be on people's minds that we can go ahead and ask while folks are typing. Will uh, facial coverings, face masks be required uh, at any of the ceremonies? I know they will be on the buses, but what about the ceremonies themselves? Right. Um, so for the ceremonies, uh, we follow the guidance provided by the CDC. Um, and that essentially is at this point that uh, that um, uh, face coverings are encouraged in indoor spaces, but they are not required. Um, in outdoor spaces, we do have um, a, a little bit more freedom there uh, based on CDC guidance. But again, that's the language that you'll see on the website when we put that information up there. The only place they will be required will be if you ride the buses either in Savannah or in Statesboro, because we tend to have the bus routes available in Statesboro. But um, again, that depends upon the number of people that we're expecting. We may be able to park everybody in, in Paulson Stadium. So, um, but again, if you plan on riding any bus, um, either in Savannah or in Statesboro, please bring your, your facial covering because you need, we'll need to wear them out. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so we have had some questions come in. Uh, so I'll try and do them in order. So the first is, um, and I don't know if you know specific numbers off the top of your head, um, but do you know how many graduates were at graduation last fall and how that might compare to this year? Um, we're pretty much on par so far uh, with the, the number of graduates um, last fall compared to this fall. But now the difference that we have is we actually had more ceremonies last fall. So they were split up into more ceremonies. What we are expecting is around 400 graduates in Savannah 
and then between 500 to 600 at each of the ceremonies in Statesboro. Um, what this equates to is about 90 minute ceremonies, hopefully, fingers crossed, in all locations. Awesome. Uh, so another question that came in, um, someone's daughter will be getting their nurse's pin on Friday. Um, I don't know if you have any insight about some of those supplemental experiences, pinnings, things of that sort uh, about, that you could share or any um, maybe insight onto expectations or things of that sort, since I know you don't directly manage those, um, but let's see. <laughs> <laughs> right, Th those are handled by the colleges and really the departments in particular. Um, they're, they're great experiences for sure. I know um, depending upon the schedule, it may make things more challenging if you're trying to, to basically choose what you can attend uh, based on um, you know when they're scheduling them versus when we're holding the larger ceremonies. Oftentimes the departments will wait until we issue what the, what the dates and times are gonna be for the larger ceremonies and then try to build around it so that it um, actually is closer in a day and time um, to, uh, to, to what the university ceremonies are. I know it's a challenge for them because they're trying to do them in both locations and, and trying to squeeze all of that in um, sometimes doesn't work quite appropriately. Um, but yeah, we do have some great experiences um, for, for all of the, the families and, and some of the students in those. Awesome. Um, so Someone's asking just for a little reminder. So we know that the Statesboro ceremonies are gonna be at Paulson Stadium, which will be outside um, open air stadium. Can you remind us where the Savannah ceremonies will be? And oh, absolutely, outside. yes. Um, it is at the uh, Savannah Convention Center and that's on Hutchison Island. So if you're familiar with Savannah, that is over the bridge from, from Savannah, from River Street um, off on Hutchison Island. Uh, we have a, some people confuse the Savannah location with the Civic Center, which is downtown. It is not the Civic Center. It is the Convention Center on Hutchinson Island. Again, you can find um, the, the actual address on our commencement website so that you can plug that into a GPS and make sure that you're going to the right location. Awesome. Uh, so should uh, our family members and supporters, should their graduate have gotten an email to confirm that they will be graduating? Well, that is an excellent question. Um, I think probably the, the easiest response is they should have gotten, if they've applied for graduation um, and they have indicated they're, they're going to, to walk on um, or they, um, they're graduating this particular semester, uh, they should have gotten an email from the Office of, Re of the Registrar about commencement ceremonies in particular so they can RSVP to the commencement ceremonies. Um, if there's a question about whether or not your student has completed all of their degree requirements to graduate, um, my email is on the screen right now. Please send me uh, your um, information about your student um, so I can double check with the registrar's office and make sure um, that, that they are all set and ready to graduate. Awesome. Um, so we have someone asking, are there any other uh, Georgia Southern graduation traditions outside of the main ceremonies and some of those pinnings that we already mentioned? Are there any other traditions? Oh, well, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I, I see one um, on the Statesboro campus in particular, um, and we actually have something similar on um, the, the Armstrong campus in, in Savannah where um, students tend to, they love to get their cap and gown early and they love to dress up in their cap and gown and all the gear and take official or really fun commencement graduation photos um, on, on uh, Sweetheart Circle in Savannah, like in front of the GSU bushes right in front of Sweetheart Circle. So <laughs> at this time of year, a lot of people are always kind of trying to maneuver around folks that are taking pictures at that particular spot in their cap and gown. Um, we have the same thing happening in Savannah in front of the, the large Georgia Southern sign on the front lawn uh, that we see a lot of students actually liking to, to pose in their cap and gown for their official graduation or their announcement. Um, it's fun things to do, and then we'll, we'll put those, they, we see them posting those things on social media as well. 
Um, so we also have hashtags available. We would love for you to, to share any photos that your graduate has. Um, it should be, and it's on the website, I think, but I believe it's hashtag GSGrad21. So that's always fun too. Awesome. Any other questions? You all have been a great audience so far, had a lot of awesome questions. So I want to give just a little bit more space to see if there are any additional ones before we close out of this meeting. So we'll give a few seconds in case you're thinking or you're trying to figure out how to put it to words or maybe you're actually typing it out right now. Uh, so I'll try and buy you a few more seconds um, and then we will begin wrapping up from there. And as we're giving it a few more seconds, I will say, um, again, my email is up on the screen. So if you think of something later, just shoot me a quick message. I'm happy to, to respond to you. Um, again, we, we just look forward to seeing you in December. Yes. All right, another one just confirming um, the Savannah ceremony. Um, so that one is indoors. Um, so you, you might have to walk a little bit if you're not opting into the buses. Um, but you will be indoors for the duration of the Savannah ceremony. That's correct. All right, so seeing no further questions, we are gonna go ahead and get ready to close out this Zoom room. Um, so again, if you do have any last second ones, try to get them in quick um, before we officially wrap up and close out this Zoom space. Uh, but we do want to say thank you for joining us tonight. Um, it's been a great time getting to chat a little bit about our fall commencement ceremonies. Uh, really excited for you to connect with your graduating student um, and to celebrate them at one of our three ceremonies in just a few short weeks. Uh, so again, as Dr. Bala said, we encourage you to make sure that your student's completing all the necessary steps. Those deadlines are coming up very quickly. And we want to make sure that they're not missing out on anything. So please make sure your students are um, going through all those proper steps. And if you do have any questions, again, you can reach out directly to the email listed on the screen. Uh, the Registrar is also another great resource regarding our commencement ceremonies. Uh, but with that, we are going to go ahead and wrap up this Zoom room. Uh, so we will be closing it here in just another minute or so.